Hello everyone, Well, 13 Scale here, also known as Scale, and welcome back to more Shadows of Reloading. Um, if you occasionally see something here, um, there's an adorable little Edgar on my lap. So, she's super cute, she might try to eat the microphone, she might try to jump onto the desk, I don't, I don't know what we've got here, but she is fully sitting upright. <laughs> okay, so what else? we need to do. Okay, go back to the Greasy, or go back to Greasy Steve. Tell him Chad Chutney sleeps with the fishes. Rufus wants you to collect three pounds of eggs from the fishermen that live underneath. Um, take the mesquite chips back to the grilling guy at Zeta. The guy at Phi uh, Epsilon Tau lost his jacket at La Bamba Iota. Yeah, Theta, and he wants you to get it for him. Okay. Well, let's go to La Bamba. You wander into a science lab seeing if someone left some kind of experimental magic reactor running unattended. Maybe they realized it was in the process of explosive overloading and run away. Maybe you should follow their reactor, their example. Inspect the reactor. Oh. You inspect the reactor carefully and discover the problem. It's being powered by electrically overcharged will-o'-wisps. And the field that keeps them contained isn't running at full power due to some faulty soldering in the control circuits. If it seems improbable to you that you would know enough about this stuff to figure it out, or just assume it was written in a notebook, uh, oh, just assume it was written in a notebook that someone left on the table. Failed to fix the reactor, I guess. Um, you have absolutely no idea what you're doing. Still, with your desperate fiddling with the device, you manage to open it open it and release some radiated wisps that were locked inside. This is bad, but it's better than the reactor exploding and blowing up half the building. Better for everyone except you, anyway. I guess we'll fight. Oh, is that what those are? Will-o'-wisps and not radiation clouds? Because I 100% would have thought they were radiation clouds. But that's just me. Raising my elemental... It is immune to bleed and poison. That's fine. Oh, I still hit it for a bunch, though. Now you won. Let's just hope you don't get fist cancer. Uh, you got 16 XP. You got loose radiation. It's a potion. Oh, God. Increases your mysticality by one and the damage of your magical weapon attacks by two. If you knew more about physics, you'd know how many rads of radiation is in this. And if it were 70 years from now, you'd tell all of your friends how rad it was. And we still have more unidentified chemicals. Is this... Uh, is this a bread house? Um, well, so that's what we're doing as our thing. Okay, no new info from it. Mailbox is made of foreign stone, which means it's not a federal crime to steal mail from it. Let's steal it then. Oh, you got junk mail. Great. Wow, these frat guys are super into geology. The entire frat house is carved from a single huge block of stone. Really nice craftsmanship, too. It must have taken forever. Let's go inside then. This feels like the Flintstones house. Not only did they sculpt a stone bar, they even did stone bottles and cups. It's real dedication to art. Look for Guy's jacket. You find it draped over one of the bar stools. It was in a tricky spot because of being exactly the same color and shape as the stool itself. Frat Guy's jacket. Take it back to the guy who lost it. <sighs> Not sure whether this counts as a painting or a sculpture. Valid. Um... This solid stone couch looks uncomfortable, but it's still in your top five frat house couches. Check under the cushions. It's a real struggle to lift them up, but you managed to get 158 meat. Wow. That's a lot. Um, what's that saying? Wait. It's hard to say what this is. A fridge, maybe, or an armoire? Open it up. It doesn't open. It's solid stone. But where do they keep their food or clothes? It's a bowl of fruit. You know, like peaches and plums. Members of this frat house apparently don't care about comfort and privacy as much as they care about sticking to a theme. Wow, this is incredible. Not only did this fraternity chisel a whole frat house out of stone and carve furniture to match, they went so far as to sculpt a bunch of frat boy statues. Presumably, they store them here and haul them downstairs to fill up space for parties? 
There's also some kind of weird stone thing. It looks a bit like a newfangled television. Maybe you've read about it except triangular? Somebody's science project, maybe. Look around. The statue is definitely doing some kind of crazy dance. And they're definitely bringing this one to the, for the party downstairs. We're kind of hovering rock. Pretty. This statue has a kind of nervous expression. Maybe it represents the sculptor's academic stress. This statue is holding its hands up in a desperate guarding gesture. It might be symbolic of students' fears of leaving school and having to join the workforce. Well, I have that. This is all just a bunch of people that were terrified of this getting turned into stone. This statue is covering its eyes with one hand. Maybe it's some kind of political commentary, maybe? It's a stone hat on the floor here. Pick it up. Oof. Got stone frat cap. F four physical armor. Holy cow. The statue is praying. How traditional. The statue looks like it's yelling at something. Must take this one to football games. <laughs> this is a television. The programming isn't very interesting. You don't see any way to change the channel, though. Can't I interact with it? Oh, the statue fell apart. What a shame. Oh, that's not good. I can't go through it. Man. I don't know how to fix it. Um. This is a stone's throw away from campus. No. I'm gonna have to see if anyone knows what's up. Here you go, dude. Give him his jacket. Hey, I found your jacket. Oh, wow. Much better. Thanks. Guy looks more comfortable now. Cat's still going nuts on the catnip. No, sprig. No. It's adorable, and I'm glad that I did. Um, Shrubberman, did we talk to him? Thanks for the plant goop, right? Looks busy, you don't really want to bother him. Okay, fine. Um, I don't know how to fix that stone house. I gotta think about that. Especially that front door overgrown with vines. I feel like there's more going on here. Alright, so here's the trash house. Here you go, dude. Um, give him the wood chips. Hey, fantastic. Thanks, pal. These are probably gonna make it real smoky in here, though. <laughs> yeah. That's how you know it's a party. Woo! Alright. Um... I would still need sleaze armor, man. Zerk cart, clean the most of the things. Uh, let me out of here. Let me out. Uh, there's nothing else I can do with this. Okay, go in if I have stench armor. Do I? What, I know I asked this last time, but it keeps happening that I forget. Sleaze armor. Spooky armor is in there. That's sleaze. Do I have any stench? I don't have nearly that much. Well, let's go back to fish and chips guy. Oh boy, complicated SIT textbook. <sighs> Cover of this textbook could be should be painted sky blue with the clouds on it, but it's way over your head. Sure. Oh, okay. Um, it's a good deal. Free thinking. Don't ever buy your textbooks. Yada, yada. Um, advanced wave botany. Okay. Read. You, first, you look at the first two pages. Only, the only thing you learn is that you're better off selling this to a used bookstore than anything else. Just to comprehend it. Um, hang on to it for now. Maybe I'll need it. I don't know. All right, here you go. You sit down across from him. So, how'd it go, kid? You got some news for me? Uh, yeah, the kid's bed is full of fish. It was a lead pipe cinch, like you said. I still don't know what that means, though. Nobody does. That's what makes it such a great turn of phrase. Anyway, nice job, kid. Now Congressman Chutney will know who he's really dealing with. Sure he will. Got a briefcase full of meat. 
Okay. Fight me. Um, let's go. Take the bus back to Ocean City. Before we go to bed. We gotta go back down into the sewers, I think. So let's go to the, um... Because the fishmen are all under. Right? So if I go through this, where the fishmen were... It's down into a manhole. Oh, right, here's the fish fighting ring. Um, no, I'm just gonna leave. I thought I had the stuff. Do I not have the stuff? I don't know where else to go. Um... Maybe I was right in being at Goldwith. Um, well, this it's the four Glocklins playing their Glockenspiels. Uh, join them. It doesn't look like fun. Probably just to end up attacking them anyway. Ugh. Good there, Edgar. Cool. Sorry, she just like left my company suddenly. Well, thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and fix me up. Uh, we're gonna do the splatter. And one more time. Good, I was hoping that would at least kill that guy. These guys are immune to bleed. But not my hits. So this means only one guy left. Come on, shoe fly, finish him off. Moderate. I just wish I knew how to help that stone house. Maybe I need to like go to sleep and wake up and then I'll be able to break it. Shoe fly got stronger, yeah. Glocklin brought, okay. Glocklin meatball. All right, let's go to Goldsmith and let's, I guess, look around. Yeah, because there should be... Oh. Um, weird shadow pocket or something. Close it. Place the jaws of the plier around this little hole and wrench it closed. Or ply it close, I guess? Open the manhole. Let's go further. Oh, hobo code. Uh, behind the... This code reads, emergency ring behind this brick. You pull out the brick, and sure enough, it's an emergency ring. Oh, you act earlier in combat. Oh, we have a bar. Don't be, you don't seem to be able to get his attention. Barrel of olives. Fancy Dan would love to have this if you could manage to get out of here. Stuff it in your pocket. Oh, I got the whole thing. Okay, if this is a legitimate shop. They'd, you'd have just legitimately shoplifted. Either a fishy-looking guy or a guy-looking fishy. Either way, it seems like he's getting an a his angry drunk on. Talk to him. Uh, hey. Hey, buddy. What's up? Who asked you? Ugh. Takes a couple of fish eggs out of his pocket and lobs them at the bartender. Hey, give me another. Loop. Bartender shoots him some side-eye, although technically fishermen, fishermen are always doing that, and brings over another bottle of something. That's about his weird head. You pause, trying to think of a more diplomatic way to phrase that. I couldn't help but noticing you ain't got to take that from the likes of you. And 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 what army? I ain't going to take nothing from you for nobody. Yeah, you, you tell him, buddy. Yeah, another thing. Uh, another thing. That's, that's right, you said it. That's right, I said it. Hey, bartender, bring... One over for my friend here. He pitches a couple more eggs at the bartender who reluctantly brings you a 40-ounce bottle of foul-looking mug. Is this Brian? <laughs> Think you can match me, you air lung? I'll drink you under the table. Yeah, go for it. I have the muscle. Despite this being an obviously terrible idea, you manage to down two and a half pints of raw salt water without throwing up. You immediately have a splitting headache. Your drinking buddy laughs at your pain expression. <laughs> Still standing, not bad. Bartender, another round. Keep going. 
You choke down another giant bottle of seawater. Despite the volume of liquid sloshing around inside you, your mouth feels entirely dry. You're thirstier than you've ever been in your life. Someone is practically jazz drumming solos nearby, possibly inside your skull. Not, not bad, friend, because I got a head start on you. One more. Okay. You can literally feel your internal organs turning to jerky. The edges of your vision are going black. You manage to stay upright just long enough to see the fish guy's head hit the table. Then you rifle through his pockets and stagger out the door with your mug, still desperately clutched in one hand. Once you're done throwing up, you take a little nap. You got Fishman Row. Well, there we go. I think that's one pound of it. Hundreds of lives in the palm of your hand, disgusting, monstrous lives in a nasty mug. Deals your muscle and stench damage to an opponent and also poisons them for three per fight. Yay! Um, okay, I think that's it. Do I have all the... Let me see if that counts. Okay, take the fishman's egg back to Rufus. Okay, we can do that now. Um, bus stop. SIT. Oh, that's... I wanted the map. Okay, back to Rufus's lab. You wind up in a spooky, dark hallway. Oh, no, not these guys. <sighs> All right, resist and attack him. Oh, hey. Thanks, I could totally use a hand, guy. All right, let's start off with this. I'm employee of the month, after all. Uh, and then we'll raise my elemental armor. Okay, um... Entire party on fire. Spooky damage. Spooky damage. So let's go ahead and just take this guy out. So this way you can bleed too. Piercing shriek. Oh. Uh, just go ahead and hit one. I don't care which one. Okay, that was a really good call. All right. Well, we killed those guys super easy. All right. You won. Guess that vampire should have tried to teach his grandmother to suck eggs, idiomatically speaking. <laughs> Polo di Volva. Increases the damage of your magical weapon attacks by four. Hmm. Okay, here. Here's your fish eggs. Hello again. I got the eggs. Oh, great. Let me just process these and, whoops, misplaced a dense decimal. We only need 0.3 pounds of eggs. Well, I guess it's plenty of this goop, so you can keep the extra eggs. Hooray, I guess. Uh, I, I was going to say, I don't see the rest of it. Here, let me write down where to find the fish mother's nest. River bridge. You'll also need this. Municipal contraption. Okay. Now we're just going to slather you in this foul-smelling jelly and come back and see me if you need it reapplied. Oh. Ensures you it's necessary, and it minuses one to all my stats. Cleans the goo Rufus covered you with. Okay. Double hooray. Can I have the newfangled metal detector? Hey, can I borrow your metal detector? Oh, God. Rats. All right, fine. So then let's go to the bridge. Might as well, right? Uh, what? Okay, I just want to make sure that wasn't important. A loud crashing sound and yelling from a nearby classroom attracted your attention and curiosity. You cautiously poke your head in the door and then quickly poke it back out again to dodge a handful of bolts thrown at the angry, thrown by an angry robot. Several students are cowering behind overturned desks and you crawl back to where you join them as the two robots sit idly throwing junk everywhere. What the heck's going on here? Well, um, we were wondering if robots could be programmed to have a sense of team spirit. So we split into two teams and make these tennis ball throwing robots and then set them to dislike like each other. Well, it seems to have worked. Okay. Um, yeah, a little too well. We should have taught them sportsmanship first. Deactivate them. The student explains that where the robots shut off switches are and you duck, dodge, and dive through the storm of hurled debris. Eventually managed to shut them down with only minor bru bruises. Phew, thanks a lot. It's back to the drawing board. Maybe just stick with drawing, actually. <laughs> and just continue on our way. 
Oh, wow. Um, what does that say? This plaque says SIT Chemicals Department Dump Zone. Great. Just right off the bridge. Well, we'll see what that's about next time. Because that's all the time we've got. So take care, everybody.